Hi guys, welcome to a, another video. In this video, I'm going to carry on with my autumnal theme and I'm going to be making this wreath. This is for my rooftop secret garden, which I don't normally share on my YouTube channel. However, I thought I would share this with you guys, so I hope you enjoy. When I make leaves for my miniatures and on the odd occasion flowers, my preferred medium is alcohol markers and vellum. And the reason for this is because of the transparency of this paper. And when we use the alcohol markers on top of that one, it is very easy to blend those colors together, but also it doesn't buckle, which I find is useful when it comes to cutting out these shapes on well i use a cricket so on my experience with a cricket i find that that's a, a very good combination so for these leaves which i am making today i am using a mixture of autumnal colors of the yellows the oranges the browns the greens and i'm using them in kind of a, an ombre fashion and then i'm mixing them together and blending them together just to give me various across this A4 sheet. Once the alcohol has had time to dry I then flip it over and repeat that same process and pattern with the same alcohol markers just because that vellum does have a slightly dull side on one side. Now one step which I forgot to do which I do like the look of when I remember is to give the paper a spritz of IPA and that helps to mottle and mix those colours together even more which gives a nicer mix. So there's nothing wrong with how these colours have mixed today because they do look absolutely beautiful. So I then ran that through my Cricut machine. It didn't take too long to cut out all of these leaves. I then went back to my alcohol markers and I selected some darker colours, the same sort of tones, just darker versions. And then I selected the odd leaf out of those just to give more variation and more choice when it comes to me choosing how I wanted to decorate this wreath. A little tip for you if you do decide to do something like this or use vellum for these kind of delicate cuts. If you use a brand new mat and a brand new blade, then you get the most perfect cut with it. I find that if I have a dirty mat and a duller blade, I don't have the perfect cut and leaves stick to the paper and it doesn't just come off in a, a one pull like it did on this. So if you do make these kind of delicate cuts with vellum, definitely consider swapping out for a brand new blade and a brand new mat. As I was removing the leaves from the mat, I was putting them into categories of the stemmed leaves, the oak leaves, the maple leaf, and what looks like a pretty generic leaf. I don't use all of these in today's project. At this point, I didn't know what I wanted to use, but I do like to do this in batch. So they got bagged up and put aside for a later project. Now I can start looking at the base for this wreath. So to make that, I'm using a florist wire, which is wrapped in brown paper. I then picked out the closest thing to me, which had a diameter, which I kind of like the look at, which in this instance was a bottle of paint. This is just over one inch in diameter. So I wrapped the wire around as many times as it would allow. And then to make sure that it didn't slip anywhere, I just wrap that around itself. I want my wreath to be a natural twig based wreath. So I have this coconut fiber, which I got from my local dollhouse store a few years back for under five pounds, which I thought was pretty crazy. And I was just wrapping this around in total three layers of this it kind of holds its own shape as well so it wasn't too much to deal with which was rather nice as soon as i got round to the end of it i gave it a little bit of a haircut and then i gave it the next round and like i say there were three layers of this in total just enough for me to cover up that base wire 
After that third row, it was looking a little bit crazy, so it did need a little haircut. The next step was to give it a few spritz of isopropyl alcohol, followed by some watered down PVA. The reason why you do these two together is that when you put the watered down glue over the IPA, it allows that glue to sink into the material that you're using rather than just bubble up and sit on the top and so this is how we're going to hold everything together now to really help this feel like an autumnal wreath i'm going to use these potka pods now these are a natural seed which just make the most perfect little pumpkins the only thing which i needed to do to help sell that a little further is give them a coat of orange acrylic paint and then later on i did off camera give them a brown wash just to help bring out those beautiful little pumpkin details Now that my wreath is fully dry, I'm going to give it a coat of brown acrylic paint. I then allowed that to dry and I followed up with a dry brushing of a very, very light grey. This gives me that old, dried out, twiggy feel that you see on wreaths. We recently received a bouquet of flowers in our household so I decided to save these very very tiny little flower buds. So I'm going to give those a coat of red paint and some of them I'm going to give a coat in a orange and yellow colour. This could possibly mimic a very small flower or maybe an autumnal berry. Um, either way, I feel like these were the perfect addition to this wreath. I decided to decorate my wreath with these leaves on the stems because there are some really beautiful colour variations going through these. I picked up my favourites and I picked out the darker greens as well as these autumnal oranges and the greens. To give these leaves some shape, I'm using a ball stylus. I do not know what size ball stylus this is, unfortunately, but I'm using this on a very dense old mouse mat and just rolling it around. And then after I get a kind of a, a domed shape, I then flipped over the leaf and then repeated it so that it gave me this wavy natural kind of feel to them then to glue my leaves into place i'm just using eileen's tacky glue I already know in my mind that I'm going to have the pumpkins in the bottom central area and obviously these are a very vibrant orange colour so I'm going through this trying to even out my colours so I'm picking out the darker green foliage first of all and adding that to the top and then I'm using the gradients in the leaves to follow that down into the lighter greens going into the yellows and then I'm going to add in the oranges in between there and slightly up at the top as well just to follow that colour through. I picked out my favourite, most smallest of the pumpkins and I did only use two of them. I felt like three was maybe just one too many. And to glue these down, they glued very easily with just a large dollop of the Eileen's or Aileen's tacky glue.
Now just behind on the mat, I have a selection of yellow, orange, and some white miniature flowers. These are dried flowers, which you've seen me use before, which I purchased at Timu. And I decided to go ahead and use the white flowers so that it would bring in the grayness from the twigs on the right hand side and i decided to use three so that it would contrast with the two pumpkins unfortunately i didn't have any seasonal small ribbon as my tie to hang this so instead i used some very thin black wire which i wrapped around a skewer and i used aliens tacky glue to glue that into place I then went through my bits boxes and I came across this 3D printed dragon door knocker which just so happens to have a little hook on it. This was 3D printed as a free file from Thingiverse. If that is still available I will leave the link in the description box below. I painted that in a brass acrylic paint followed by a black wash and then I used a sponge to apply this blue paint to mimic a patina look. All that was left for me to do then was to glue that onto my beautiful gothic door and hang my wreath. And that brings me to the end of this video. So as always, thank you so, so much for spending your time with me today. Your views and your support watching these things I put out really do make the difference of me carrying on with showing what it is that I'm getting up to in my little craft room. So thank you so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day and I shall see you very, very soon. Bye.